Hello everybody and welcome back to the old stream farm. So we're going to be bailing our canola straw. The first time I've bailed canola straw in FS22. It is of course a mod. Uh, I'll put the link down below if you're interested. The extended straw crop mod. So I think I'm just going to put this... Uh, I probably should put it back in the shed actually. It doesn't want to just be sitting in the field. Okay, spin round here and we'll pop it in the shed, just here for this space. Hmm, yes, that reminds me, we have manure, we have more manure, we still have the muck spreader rented, so we should probably spread everything that we have. There's already quite a bit in the spreader, but there's also quite a bit in here as well, so we better do that after we have done the baling. So yeah, we're going to be... Hopefully baling canola straw with the go wheel baler. As I said, I'm, I'm thinking it is just generic straw, despite it coming from a canola crop. So it should just work absolutely fine in here. So let's go and get our first load. We have to pick it up with the forage wagon, which we don't actually need to rent. I already own one, but that was a mistake in the previous episode. We might as well keep using it for today, as we've paid for it. And then we can return it, and then next time we can use our own forager. So, yeah or forage wagon. Yeah, it's just registering it as generic straw, which is great. It's exactly what we want it to do. Uh, it is July, I think the price for straw will be quite good, so we can just sell these immediately. Because um, we've already got loads and loads of straw for the cows, so they don't need any more at all. I think their enclosure is at capacity, and they've got many Heston bells stacked up in the same shed, so yeah, the chance of them getting through all of that before next year's harvest is incredibly slim. Right, 22% full. It looks like we should get a couple of loads from this field. To answer the obvious question, which is why not just sell it directly from the forage wagon, just take it straight to the sell point, uh, it is simply because we're just trying out the go wheel baler. It's nice to use it, because, well, the chances of using it again in the future are, well, it's not going to be impossible to use it again, but the chances are a bit slim, because it is very expensive, we would have to have an incredibly large farm, I think, to justify using this. I would love to use it again. Hopefully we can do. Um, we might be able to get it on core farm possibly, but yeah, we'll see. Anyway, that can now be emptied into there, into the sort of hopper which it has integrated into the front. Uh, we can also switch on the tractor's engine and engage the PTO, and that should start the bailing process. The first bale is hay because, of course, they already had some hay in it. So we're going to have to take that away. I still have super strength on. But now the next bale should be straw. So I'll have to start loading them up, I guess. Yep, so you can see the straw going up there, into there, and just wait for it to pop out. Here it comes. Very nice. So yes, if we were doing baling for keeping the bales, if we're going to keep them in the shed, this is a much better approach because we don't have to go all the way around the field picking them up again. There it is. <laughs> I thought that was a tractor. Uh, yes, we're actually really close. So we can put the straw bales on the rear trailer. The rear trailer is actually an auto loader, but only for square bales. For quadrants. And the hay bale is going to be kept. We do need hay for the sheep and for the cows, actually. In fact, we might as well give it to the cows. We have the huge session of selling silage very, very soon. In fact, we should probably rest soon as well, as we have had at least one other episode in this in-game day, which we don't need to do. We need to get things to progress. We need to get the silage fermented. 
But now I'll just keep taking these bales off the front of the baler. We've got a bit more straw to pick up, not much. But that was quite a big load that we just brought in. We can actually get more litres of straw onto a trailer than you can in a forage wagon, because obviously in a forage wagon it's all loose, whereas with the bales they're compacted nice and tight, so you can get a lot in. Uh, yes, those front bales should be kept, I think. I think, I don't know what to do. I either should keep some of the pit for total mix ration, or I should keep these. And, and I really don't know what to do for the best. They're still grass bales currently. Just pull forward, make this easier. Wow, all of that condensed down to, I think, five bales in total. We only got four there, though, but yeah, I think there were five. So, yeah, that goes to show that if we were clearing an absolutely gigantic field, instead of shuttling all the way to a cell point, which could be a very long way away, like, for example, on Renabu, <laughs> that is so far between field and uh, cell point, yeah, if we were doing loads and loads and loads, then we could just keep taking it back to the yard, or even bale in the field, which is what's so good about this. Then it can really compact them all into just a few bales, and then we can only do one trip, maybe to the cell point. I was never going to get around there. Yeah, so that is uh, a huge positive with this particular baler. And you don't have to go chasing around the field picking them up either because they're all produced and deposited in the same place right there we go so I think that is actually all of the loading wagon work so I can return that before we incur any more fees oh, we've only had it for 0.4 hours but we have we don't need it muck spreading will be coming next once we've sold these straw bales looks like we have a bit of congestion here just get these moved and then I guess we're going to be finished with the Go Wheel Baler too. I'll probably just replace the Heston Baler with a small, well, a smaller Baler, I would have thought. Maybe even the Go Wheel Round Baler. I don't get on well with round bales, but I think it'll be alright because I'll probably just get an auto loader. Or maybe we'll get a quadrant because then it'll be compatible with the lorry, which is of course my original intention. Yeah, probably a quadrant. So we have six bales, six straw bales so far. One's on the ground. We'll try that again. Right, did we get any more? Is that it? I think that might be it. Ah, uh, there's possibly still some straw in it. Ah, oh, look at that, it's so close. That is the issue with renting though, because if we do need to return it, which we do, and it's still got quite a bit in it, then yeah, you are losing it, basically. So that's a shame, but that's not the machine, that is just the rental system. It's a shame you can't empty a partially produced bale, but that's just the way it is. But that's going to be fun. I enjoy using the Go Wheel baler. Hopefully we can use it again. Let me just confirm it doesn't say empty, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Nope. Nope, that seems to be uh, the way it is. Okay. So I think what I might do is drop off the trailer because then we can take that separately because the silage bell is not quite ready.
we'll keep these here for now. So let's first of all see what the price is like. If it's better next month, we can sell it next month. Uh, the animal dealer is currently the best, but it is decreasing. Oh, it's a terrible price. I thought... It, yeah, I suppose. I thought August, September would be worse, but there we go. It is... Oh, August is just as bad. Right, okay. So in that case, nothing is going anywhere. We might as well... Well, check up on the silage. Muck spreading needs to be done. We do need to do drilling. 13%, okay. Um, right. We'll do the muck spreading. Let's just attach this tractor to the muck spreader. Put the bucket back on the Merlot. I think there is space for maybe one more bucket load. I don't think it's 100% full. Yeah, that's, it's been loaded in an interesting way by me. It's only 52% full, but it's all in one place. So we've got a great big heap. There we go. Okay. Let's muck things out. Seems to be everything for now, but we will have some more in the morning. Because the cows certainly do have enough food and they've got enough straw as well. So there's no excuses, cows. Keep pooping. Are we full? Or close to full? 90% is pretty good. So we've just cut those grass fields. It works best on the grass fields. So this can go on the grass field. Then we will rest. Um, I think, yeah, the arable fields, we will just apply the fertilizer, the granular fertilizer. Well, this is great for the grass. Also, we have nowhere near enough manure for the other fields. So we should see, when I've done this, if, if I get out, and we take a look at the field itself, it should say that nitrogen is perfect. Supplying 11.4 tonnes of manure per hectare. Although that is variable. But it looks like when I'm actually in the middle of the field here, well, when I'm actually covering the field, not covering the, uh, the boundary, it is 11.4. Okay. So hopefully now I can just go up and down, that's going to make it easier. Oh, can't see for the trees. And it's looking promising that we're going to have enough for this particular field. So anything that we have left we can take over to the other grass field. And I am pleased that we managed to try out the Go Wheel Baylor. As I said, it's not something that we're probably going to do again, and we're certainly not going to do it again on this series. It was just so I wasn't completely ignoring the DLC, because, yeah, that DLC was difficult for me to do in a series. Obviously, I could have done its own showcase video. But in a series, because we've already got Baylors and stuff, and they were pretty expensive, it was, yeah, not the easiest to get in. This is good, it's going a long way. We might even be able to do an entire side of the other field. Yep, that's pretty much done. So I'll see you when we're almost out of manure.
is almost empty. Just use it up over here. And then tomorrow we can top up again. There won't be another full load, but there'll be something. There we go. Right, let's check. Nitrogen perfect, as predicted. pH is only good. It should have lime. Uh, but you can see where we haven't been yet. Nitrogen is only okay. That's because it's uh, had nothing applied. So, uh, yeah, because it is grass, it never actually goes super bad. But it wants to be perfect. We did really well out of that. We did all of that, all of that, and a tiny bit of... Actually, no, quite a bit of that. I reckon we could finish that quite easily with the manure which is produced overnight. So I'll get this into position, ready to load again, first thing. I don't know if the silage will be ready as early as tomorrow morning. I find it unlikely. I guess there's a chance, but yeah, I, I would say no earlier than later on tomorrow afternoon. That would be extremely fast. There we go, right. Let's get back to the house. We'll uh, use the sleepy function. Oh, I've turned off my thing, so I <laughs> know which... Oh, there we go. Good. And we just sleep until we're refreshed. Nice. Some expenses. Leasing costs and all that. So what have they given us? They've given us a line of manure. Thank you, cows. They've given us more than a bucket load. Bucket and a half, I would say. But it's a nice day. A good day for drilling. Or at least to start drilling. The drill is something that we still don't really have. We've got the cultivator drill, but that has a limited amount of crops that it can actually put in. Oh, we'll get every single bit. Yeah, that should easily be enough to finish that field. There really wasn't that much to do. Brilliant. And that'll be the grass all made perfect again, with the exception of pH, without spending any money on fertilizer. Although you could argue that we have done because of the expense of the muck spreader. The daily leasing fee. But it really shouldn't be that high. I think it was fairly low. Cheaper than uh, buying lots and lots of fertilizer. The grass is starting to grow, so it's harder to see. It is slightly darker though where we have actually been, but you don't get the texture. Still, it's a really good working width. So a bit of overlap isn't going to be an issue. I think we probably have just a tiny bit over there and then we should be good, I would say. Yeah, this piece done and this piece here that little triangle shape might need to be done but let's just check that that looks promising the 
<laughs> um. Okay. Nitrogen is perfect. Yeah, it's all perfect. Don't know why it looks quite so bad. I guess if we keep applying it, it does improve it even more. But it is perfect, so there's no point. Yeah, that's good. Okay, well, let's take this back to the yard. And then we'll look at the drill situation. But I think the best thing to do is going to be to get rid of our cultivator drill and rent a direct drill. Park this here. Yeah, so we'll just see what we have exactly. Disc arrows. <laughs> wow, it's actually really expensive. It's a good machine, but we're, we're sort of limited on width and crops that we can choose from. So let's just go and I'll put it on the the eight, the eight S. But um, let's just go and take that over to the cell point. There we go. Tuck that away. We've got a small amount of seed in here. So we'll take that out and on our way out we'll check our seed supplies. Let's see what we've got. We've got two bags, which well one full one and one which is about 10% full. So it's probably gonna be worth getting a bit more. With the money we can make from this, that's not going to be tricky. It would be even better to get a drill which can also fertilise. So I will look into that. But basically, every field needs to be done. I just don't know when this series is going to run until. It's a total mystery at the moment. Probably best to repair it and repaint it. And now we can sell it. Nice. Okay. So now into cedars. It would be so good to go with something like this. But that doesn't do fertilizer. So that one does. But it is two meters smaller. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, we'll go with this then. Let's go and attach it. We'll get some seed, we'll get some fertilizer, and, yeah, we'll um, get drilling. If we're putting in something like soybeans, we don't even need to do fertilizer. But I think probably today we will put something like oats in. Right, that's definitely enough seed because we can top up in the yard and we can always come back for more fertilizer. There we go, 72% of both. So I think the field which I want to go for first, today's field that we're going to do, is field number two. Because this one has been empty for a while and it would be really good to drill it. So we've got the oats selected, we've got fertilizer and seed in. This should be very, very simple and fast. Because although, yeah, we are down on two meters by going with the one which can do fertilizer, it's still quite big. And you never know, it might actually struggle pulling it up here. It's not a quad track or a challenger. So, although it's, yeah, it's not small, it still may struggle with the bigger one. I think this is probably the perfect setup for this tractor. That's looking really good. I'll probably go around the headland first and then we can go up and down. And then we can get it done nice and quickly.
Well, that's good. It means we've got another field growing at least. Along with the grass fields. And it looks like everywhere I turn, it doesn't like to kill the weeds. It doesn't cultivate the weeds up. Let's just see. I'm not going to turn it off or anything. Just turn. Yeah, it did a bit. Just leaving a few weeds, but I don't think it really matters because we're still going to have to spray herbicide anyway. They'll regrow. It's just interesting that it is leaving some behind, even though I'm covering that ground. Right, just head back down to the bottom. We'll get that piece that's been missed, then we'll put this in the other field near to the yard, ready for next time, because we're going to drill... Uh, well, we're going to certainly drill this side of the road in the next episode. As for the fields over there, I'm not too sure at the moment. Good grief, look at that. Bunker silo is done fermenting. Okay, that's just changed the plan for the beginning of the next episode. <laughs> uh, looks like we're going to be selling silage if the price is really good. Let's just check the price for silage. January is the best time, it's now August, so... Oh, just like the straw. It's the worst it could possibly be, but it is increasing. So I suppose, yeah, what we could do is drill, then rest, then at least we'll be in September. September there is it's quite a, a jump, so... Actually, it's not that bad anyway. 4.65 and the peak is only 5.60. So yeah, we'll still do it next time. Just in September. I was going to finish by checking... <laughs> the pit to see how much it had fermented but now I don't need to or well, we could finish by opening it up and having a good look at it but yeah this is the next field to do I'm not too sure which crop we'll do yet but we still have fertilizer so we might as well put a crop in which requires fertilizer let's have a look at this pit there's so many liters in here too 365,317 litres. It's going to be quite a job emptying it. If the Roper Nawaro mouse fits into there, I might use that. But yeah, I'll have to make sure it fits. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And until next time, see you again soon. Bye for now.